Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to build an exponent function in C++. Now, an exponent function is basically a function that will take a number to a specific power. So um, I could write a function that I could pass in two numbers. Like if I passed in three and four, this would basically give me back three raised to the fourth power. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how we can build this and we'll actually get a chance to use uh, four loops. So we can use a for loop in order to build this function and it's gonna be pretty cool. So up here, I'm gonna create my exponent function. So we're gonna have this use a integer. So I'm just gonna say int and why don't we just call this power because it's taking a number to a specific power. I'm gonna make an open and closed parentheses and open and closed curly bracket. Now our power function is gonna take two arguments. So it's gonna take a base number and it's gonna take a power number. And we're basically gonna take the base number to the power of the power number. So I'm just gonna say int and then int pow num. Now down here in our power function, we need to figure out how we can do this. So I basically need to take base num to power num. And we can use something called a for loop in order to do that. So the first thing I wanna do is just create an, a variable. So I'm just gonna call it result. And I'm just gonna set this equal to one. And then down here, I'm basically just gonna return result. So essentially our goal inside of this function is to get re the result variable equal to the value of the base num raised to the power number, right? That's kind of our goal throughout this function. Let's just say for the purposes of simplicity and the purposes just for of this tutorial that we're only gonna be able to handle positive number exponents. So we're just gonna go ahead and assume that pow num is gonna be positive. Um, and that'll just make it a lot simpler and kind of help me to drive home the point a little bit better. What we're gonna need is a for loop and I'm gonna go ahead and write out this for loop. Now up here in the parentheses, we need to specify three things. The first thing I need to specify is a variable. So I'm just gonna say int i is equal to zero. I'll start this out at zero. Now what I need to do is specify a looping condition or a loop guard. So I wanna keep looping as long as i is less than the pow num. Essentially what I'm saying here is I wanna go through this loop pow num times. So as many times as the pow num specifies, I wanna go through this loop. So if pow num is three, I wanna loop through three times. If pow num is five, I wanna loop through five times. That's basically what this is saying. And then over here, we can just specify something that we wanna do after each iteration of the loop. So I'm just gonna say I plus plus, and basically we'll just be incrementing the value of I every time we go through the loop. All right, so down here inside of our for loop, we need to think about what we can do. So we're our, we already know that we're gonna be looping through here pow num times, right? So what I think we should do is we should multiply result times the base num every time we go through this loop. So what I'm gonna say is result is equal to result times base num. And the reason that this is gonna work is because, let's just kind of break this down. The first time we go through this loop, right, result is gonna be equal to one. So the first time we go through this loop, we're multiplying base num by one. So we just get base num. The second time we go through the loop, result is equal to base num, right? In other words, result has the value of base num. So the second time we go through, we're essentially multiplying base num times base num, base num squared, right? The third time we go through this loop, result has the value of base num squared. So if we're multi multiplying base num squared times base num, that'll give us base num cubed. So that's kind of why this is gonna work, right? So we're looping through this for loop, pow num times, and every time through the loop, we're multiplying result times the base num. And you can see this for loop is very useful because it allows us to only loop through the loop a specified number of times, right? It makes it really easy for us to only loop through, you know, pow num times essentially. All right, so this is the basic function and this looks pretty good to me. So again, we're only gonna, this is only gonna be able to handle positive number uh, exponents. So positive number pow nums. Okay, so let's go ahead and call this. So I'm just gonna say, um, actually, why don't we print out the results? So I'm gonna see out um, power and I'm gonna pass in two numbers. So why don't we pass in two and three? So we're gonna go ahead and do um, two cubed. So now let's run this function and you'll see we're getting eight. So two cubed is eight, two times two is four, four times two is eight. Let's try another one. Why don't we do four squared? 
So now we should get 16. And you can see over there we get 16. So it looks like our little function is working. And basically the point of this tutorial was just to kind of demonstrate to you another way that we can use these for loops. So I'm using this for loop in order to essentially specify how many times I want to loop through something. And for loops are really useful for that because we're keeping this count. So I is representing how many times we've gone through the loop. So on the third iteration of the loop, I can tell us that we've gone through three times essentially. And that's why this is useful. And so you can see, it's actually really easy to do something like that. It only takes up like two lines of code. So that's uh, the basics of building something like a power function. And actually, this is kind of useful because you can kind of see how a function like this might get put together. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.